Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 20th Annual Apex Awards. We are so excited to celebrate this evening with you. Please welcome our MC for the evening, CEO and President of the Colorado Technology Association, Franny Matthews. Welcome to the 20th Annual Apex Award. I'm Franny Matthews, President and CEO of Colorado Technology Association. While the Apex Awards look a little different this year, we are so excited to be with all of you this evening. Each year, we gather at this event to celebrate individuals and organizations who are brave enough, bold enough, and resilient enough to create big impact across our industry. This year, that purpose is more important than ever. Tonight, we celebrate these leaders and their journeys to the top. We all have journeys to share. None of our journeys are a straight line, and, these, and there are curves and ups and downs and bumps along the way that make us even better today than we were yesterday and ensure that we continue to grow into tomorrow. This past year has certainly had many bumps, but this community has persevered and grown together. This evening is all about you. We'd love to hear what from you. Uh, what are the one or two words that would describe your journey over the past year? Please share your words in the chat. We invite you to use the chat throughout the evening to cheer on tonight's finalists and winners. Please let me share a little not so well kept secret. I am an eternal optimist. This is marked by an unwavering enthusiasm that for tomorrow and what it will bring. Even with challenges of 2020, there were silver linings, and I love to celebrate each and every one of them. The innovation, the speed of execution, the passion in which this tech community showed up in 2020 was spectacular. This was the year of the tech heroes. In CTA, the CTA team left our office on March 13th. Little did we know we'd be changed forever. Without hesitation, we pivoted. We leaned into technology and digital environments to continue to connect our members to resources and to each other. We didn't do it reluctantly, we did it with gusto. And quite frankly, because you inspired us, because we didn't want to let you down. I feel a deep empathy for the many who were impacted over the last few months. We know we will continue to face challenges. What keeps me optimistic is the belief that we will get through this together and we will be stronger than ever. I have an immense amount of gratitude for this amazing network of people. I'm so grateful for the CTA team that I get to work with every day and our board of directors. Our 2020 board chair, Alita Jeffries, 
worked so hard last year to serve and support this community. Alita is the Vice President of Consulting Services for State and Local Government at CGI. She continues to be an excellent steward of CTA's mission. Our 2021 board chair is Eileen Baines, Senior Vice President and CIO for CoBank. Eileen is a dear friend, and we are so excited to work with you this year. CTA remains committed to helping our members stay connected in new and innovative ways. Today, we hope you had a chance to take advantage of the pre-event networking uh, with our peer-to-peer -peer meetings and speed networking sessions. Thank you to our networking sponsor, Cooley, for making these opportunities possible. We also have several ways for you to participate in the evening tonight, and in doing so, win some prizes. These opportunities are sponsored by Okta. Okta is a security company that specializes in access management. Thank you to the Okta team for your great support. Our first opportunity for participation this evening is a little game. We're going to be spinning the wheel of names to select an attendee to win a prize. So let's spin the wheel right now and find out who the first winner is. <laughs> and the winner is Chriselle Crawley. Congratulations, Chriselle. All right. Uh, we'll be spinning our wheel of names again later this evening. Don't worry, we'll track down the winners after the event to deliver your prizes. The programs like this just don't happen without the support of our sponsors. Let's take just a moment to give a virtual round of applause for our sponsors this evening. Thank you to our platinum sponsors, Accenture, Invest Northern Ireland, Moss Adams, and Zendesk. To our gold sponsors, Colorado Workforce Development Council, Plant Moran, and DeVita. And our silver sponsors, Colorado Office of Economic Development and International Trade, Cooley, First Tech, Federal Credit Union, and Okta. Let us give all our sponsors more virtual rounds of, supply, of applause. We are so grateful for the support that these companies have given us uh, to the CTA community and the finalists and winners that we are celebrating tonight. Earlier, I mentioned engagement opportunities during this evening's program. Well, I have one more way for you to participate. Our sponsor, Passport Challenge. Visit five or more sponsor profiles in the event platform and collect their secret codes. And once you have five, you can enter to win a prize. Yes, we have more prizes. You can find more details about this on the platform and under sponsor uh, passport challenge. This is a great way to extend your networking opportunities. I also have some terrific partners that I would like to uh, uh, acknowledged and thanked tonight. Shanna and John from Moxie Lab for providing speaker training. Thank you so much for your help. And thank you to our media partner, the Denver Business Journal. On Monday, February 8th, you can find the profiles of our finalists and winners on the DBJ website. We encourage you to learn more about their journeys to the top. All of this year's nominees and finalists have stories from the past year of leading through uncertainty, making tough decisions, leaning into innovation, and finding their silver linings. We have been celebrating their journey all week long, and we are excited to continue to do so this evening. Starting last Monday, we announced award winners via social media and the Apex platform. In case you missed it, the awards we presented this week include the Advocate of the Year, awarded to Anthony Neal Graves, CIO and Executive Director for the Office of Information Technology at the State of Colorado. 
Before joining the state, Anthony spent more than 16 years with Intel, working in both the U.S. and China on business and technology strategy. He later served as the executive director of the state's broadband office for four years, where he focused on expanding the internet access for Colorado's most rural areas. Tony was appointed CIO and executive director of the Office of Information Technology at the state of Colorado in November of 2020. He is committed to working across all agencies to ensure superior citizen experience through innovation in GovTech solutions. Congratulations, Tony, and thank you for all you do to serve our community. The talent champion of the year this year is Helen Young Hayes. Helen founded Activate Workforce Solutions to alleviate poverty by creating pathways to employment. Activate is a tuition-free technology training and professional development program for individuals from diverse communities. It offers students the ability to earn industry-recognized credentials in in in-demand roles. In its first five years, Activate Workforce Solutions will provide training to 500 individuals and place 400 into careers. Congratulations, Helen. You are a gem to our community, our talent champion of the year. The Emerging Leader of the Year Award went to Lady Perez, Vice President of Strategic Development Operations at Zayo Group. Lady started at Zayo as an intern, and within just four years, she earned the title of vice president. Of her many accomplishments, she, her most impactful was her development of the first customer-facing API partnership program. Lady also continues to be heavily involved in Zayo's internship program, providing opportunities to candidates who exhibit a passion for the industry. Wow, congratulations, lady. The Emerging Tech Company of the Year was awarded to Caruso Energy Systems. Caruso Energy Systems unlocks the value of wasted and stranded energy resources. Through their proprietary technology, they are able to reduce natural gas flaring, which has had significant positive impact on our environment. Congratulations, Caruso, our Emerging Tech Company of the Year. We can't wait to see you to continue to scale your business and your impact. The Project of the Year was awarded to Colorado Department of Revenue for their creation of the sales and use tax software. This, This solution allows retail businesses nationally to go to a single website portal and find all the sales and use taxes associated with a specific Colorado destination. It has vastly simplified the process for businesses and brings hundreds of millions of new dollars into our communities from out-of-state retailers. Congratulations to the Colorado Department of Revenue. And finally, the company of the year was awarded to Conversant. Conversant drives ethics to the center of business. They provide the only truly integrated ethics and compliance application that connects multiple risk areas and data points for ethics and compliance professionals. In 2020, Conversant quickly pivoted its strategy to help companies track the risk and impact of COVID-19 on their business and mitigate its impact. Congratulations to Conversant, our company of the year. We are proud to have you in Colorado. Wow, what a group. Let's take a moment to hear from each of these incredible award winners. I think it's clear to everyone now, particularly in the environment that we're living with the pandemic and everything else, just how important technology is.
The technology landscape in Colorado has elevated so much over the years. To even be in the same category as these other companies is, is humbling. I am a fan of saying hard work beats talent. There's a lot of talent to go around. There's multiple backgrounds, but no one can trump being the hardest working person in the room. You can reduce your flaring, you can reduce your waste, you can reduce methane emissions, which reduces CO2 equivalent emissions, um, all while still providing that vital energy that the economy needs. Government is embracing the remote work. They're embracing the digital transformation. So we're all in. We can do this together. We can build the community that we've all been dreaming about and that we want to pass down to our kids. Wow, you all are so impressive and inspiring. Congratulations to all our award winners and finalists. Don't forget to find our finalists and winners video profiles in our event platform menu under finalist winner videos and in the DBJ on Monday. Please take some time to learn more about each of them and the great impact that they're having on our community, our state, and our industry. This year, while many of us have trans transitioned to home office, we've learned to connect in new and unique ways. Thanks to our sponsor at the Colorado Office of Economic Development and International Trade, we have one more way for you to connect to your, with your peers and colleagues this evening. We invite you to share a photo of you celebrating remotely via our Apex Awards photo booth. I did it earlier. It's a lot of fun. You can find this on our event platform and show off how you're celebrating the Apex Awards from your home. Use the hashtag ApexCO to share on social media as well. We really appreciate the love. We can't, to see, can't wait to see your celebrations. And now let's move to the live awards of the evening. Tonight, we kick off with our Entrepreneur Excellence Award. Please allow me to introduce John Monahan, partner at Moss Adams. John sits on our finance committee at CTA, and he has been such a great help to us. Will you? I, okay. He doesn't have a mic. Okay, well, we, we transition a bit. John is on uh, audio, uh, on video, but he is not on audio. So let me uh, read for John. Unfortunately, John uh, Monahan, partner at Moss Adams, was unable to connect uh, in his, well, he's not absent. You're not absent, John, you can wave. <laughs> uh, I will be happy to share a little more about Moss Adams and why they choose, chose to support the Apex Awards. John, is your mic live yet? Nope. All right. Moss Adams chose to support this year's Entrepreneurial Excellence Award because they share the entrepreneurial ethos that drives technology companies. The success that Com tech companies have achieved as a product of past year's challenges demonstrates their commitment not only to their own advancements, but also to the betterment of the Colorado community. As a firm that values passion for excellence, integrity, optimism, and optimism, their technology clients at Moss Adams uh, are, it, pardon me, Moss Adams is proud to celebrate their achievements today. 
Thank you again, Moss Adams and John for sponsoring this award. And now let's take a moment to meet this year's Entrepreneur Excellence Award finalist. The Colorado Entrepreneur Excellence Award is carefully reviewed and appointed to a successful individual who has contributed throughout the years to multiple businesses, having started, grown, or operated a tech company with great success in the state of Colorado. They may be an investor, founder, coder, marketer, maker, or doer, but this entrepreneur has a true passion and leadership to seek out problems to solve and is one who organizes, manages, and assumes the risk of a business or enterprise. Through their vision and drive, they have demonstrated they are an asset to the state of Colorado. And now we are delighted to present you with the finalists of the Colorado Entrepreneur Excellence Award, Sean Mills, Lunavi. If you can take the opportunity to listen to what uh, other people have experienced, it just gives us an amazing uh, ability to miss potholes, run faster than you could individually by yourself. Arlie Sisson, Up Purpose. Being a leader is, you know, at your best level is multifaceted, right? You shouldn't just be walking in and, you know, helping coach and give direction to things. It should be more expansive if you truly want to have the impact that you want to have, both on your community and your company, and those two things should be able to thrive together. Maureen Berkner boyd the Moxie Exchange. Our mission really is unleashing the power and potential of people from underrepresented groups and technology allows us to do that. Thank you all. Um, well, very impressive and talented group for sure. Thank you all for being here tonight. Now the finalists again are Maureen Berkner Boyd from the Moxie Group, John Mills from Lunavi, and Arlie Sisson from Up Purpose. Congratulations to our winner, Sean Mills. Well, thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate receiving this award. You know, it's a great honor to be recognized next to Maureen and Arlie. They've accomplished so much. And, you know, to, to be honored to win this award is just fantastic. You know, an entrepreneur's journey is ultimately wrought with perils and highs and, you know, everything in between. It's amazing to get to experience them with a great group of mentors and teammates all along the way that really make this a fun uh, journey. And so I certainly would be remiss without thanking all of my team members at Lunavi, all of the hard work that they put into helping us grow our organization, the dedication, and same with my wife. Unfortunately, she has to be an amazingly patient woman. So again, thank you uh, for this award. And it's such a great honor. And I'll remember this forever. And I will turn it back over to you, Fanny. Congratulations, Sean. Now, please allow me to introduce Anya Maligan, Vice President of International Development for Invest Northern Ireland, to present our next award. Anya? Thanks, Fran. Good evening. I am Anya Maligan, the Vice President of International Development for Invest Northern Ireland. This year is we focus on the stories behind the Apex journey to the winner's cup. A journey to help, belong, goal is an effort. On the journey of understanding, there's always been growth, improvement, diversity. You just got to take it all in. Do what is right, continue to grow, continue to live. And best is a proud sponsor of the Apex. Award, and especially the award, the CEO of the award. It's important to recognize and support the leaders, especially in technology and innovation. At Investment, we work closely with CEO as they build a national presence, grow globally, and we introduce 
best talent We're proud to part Colorado, an important market in Northern Ireland. So without further ado, let's meet Nick Heinle, CEO of The CEO of the Year Award is presented to the person who manages the overall operation and resources of a business. While the Chief Executive Officer duties vary from company to company, this creative, adaptable, innovative, and determined founder or CEO leads a Colorado-based tech company to success through their passion to push technology forward and make life better for all of us. In addition to the daily role of leading their company, their leadership skills help drive the vibrancy of the tech economy beyond their business. Now we present you the finalists for CEO of the Year, Dan Mackin of Rule 4. You know, the Colorado tech community is truly amazing. It's uh, this perfect combination of just like really tight knit. Um, everybody seems to know everybody, but just so open and welcoming to folks. Julie Lerner of Pan Exchange. All of our jobs as CEO is first and foremost to be the bus driver. I think it's really unrealistic to have expectations of employees if you can't keep the company going in a straight line. And Amanda Moriucci of Appet Ventures. There's no net zero effect that you have on another person. You either leave them better or you leave them worse. Wow, what an amazing group of CEOs. You're very lucky in Colorado. Thank you all for being here tonight. And the CEO of the year is Dan Macken. Congratulations. Wow, that's, uh, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's uh, quite the honor uh, to be selected for this award and, and included in this category with um, Julie and Amanda, you know, two amazing CEOs for uh, doing amazing work at Pan Exchange, App Adventures. We're really lucky to have their companies here in Colorado's tech scene. Um, thanks to CTA and the team that put in a ton of effort to pull this off this year. I know that that's just been a huge lift. And really thanks to Rule 4's uh, other co-CEO, my business partner and close friend, Trent Hine. This uh, co-CEO thing uh, has been a wild ride and I literally couldn't do it without you. Um, this last year, you know, it's a bit of an understatement to say it's been pretty rough on everyone. You know, it's been hard. But one of the great things, and if not the greatest thing about humans, is our ability to empathize. You know, we have the capacity to try and understand where someone's coming from and what they've experienced. But this past year, more than ever, you know, we've really had to step up and support those around us, reach out, love one another, and show kindness. Um, everyone's been affected by the pandemic. No doubt you've had employees, colleagues, friends, or family who've had a really tough go of it, but our response individually as humans in these tough times has a larger impact than we often can imagine. So, you know, first we gotta do what's right, treat people like humans, understand everyone's fighting a battle we likely know nothing about. So please be a friend, call a friend, make sure those around you know and care about you, know you care about them. Uh, and that you're there to help, and then do it. Let's take care of people and help others and know that it makes a difference. Thanks again to the Colorado Tech Association. Really appreciate the honor. Um, I'll hand it back to Franny to continue with the program. Awesome. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for those, those wonderful words and congratulations. Uh, now I'd like to introduce Justin Mathis, Commercial Account Executive at Zendesk to present our next award. Justin? Hi, Franny. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Justin Mathis, Account Executive over at Zendesk. And for those of you who don't know us, you know, Zendesk, we are a service-first CRM company. And what we do is we build software designed to improve customer relationships and turn companies into what we call champions of customer service. So now over the years, we've formed some, some really awesome relationships with companies all across the state of Colorado. And we look forward to continuing to do so as sponsors of the Colorado Technology Association and the Apex Awards. Um, tonight, we're very proud to be sponsors of the CISO Award. 
And we're very excited to hear firsthand about the growth in the tech industry in Colorado. And we always love to celebrate those who are leading the charge. So let's take a moment and meet this year's CISO Award finalists. Effective security is mapped directly into the business it supports. The CISO of the Year Award recognizes this security leader in the Colorado technology field. These innovative CISOs have implemented exceptional security programs that have accelerated the success of their Colorado-based business. Employing people and resourcefully utilizing processes and technologies, these security leaders have positioned the security program within their companies to deliver on the core mission of the organization, as well as to protect its technological assets. And now we would like to present you the finalists for this year's CISO of the Year Award. Brennan Babeck, Oracle. Security provides a linkage to you know doing good for people too and helping people you know, use technology safely. And I think that's really important too, to have like kind of a purpose behind it as well. Benjamin Edelin, City of Boulder. It's not, it's not profitable, it's essential work that protects our critical infrastructure and mutes the human cost of cybersecurity damage. And I'm pretty excited about what is the human cost and how do I get in between that damage and real people? Artie Wolkowski, Dish Network. You have to be your own career advocate, right? You have to be the person that is pushing the most um, for what you want. All right. Quite the incredible group that we have here tonight. Thank you guys for being with us. We do have some results here. And I would like to say congratulations to this year's CISO of the Year Award winner, Mr. Brennan Baybeck. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very grateful and humbled to receive this uh, award and this recognition. And um, I'm especially when we look at all the great finalists and uh, people that were in this, this category. I want to say thank you to the Colorado Technology Association for the recognition as well and everything that they do to promote and support the, uh, the technology industry here in Colorado. Um, I also wanna recognize the security community here in Colorado. It's an incredible community and I've had the privilege to be involved in it and help it grow over the last 25 years. And it's been a great experience. And finally, I'd like to thank my family, my friends, my colleagues and my mentors for everything that they've done to support me throughout my career. I would not be here without them, and I truly appreciate everything that they've done for me. Franny, back to you. Brennan, congratulations. Congratulations to all our winners this week and this evening. We have a few more important awards to announce, but before we do, we're gonna take a quick break. This is a great time to step away if you need to, but please be back in 10 minutes at 6, 15 or 616 uh, before we break. Uh, I'd like to spin the wheel of names one more time and give away another prize. Can we bring up the wheel? Congratulations, Charlie Billy. Thanks again to Okta for sponsoring these opportunities this evening. Also, don't forget to show off uh, how you're celebrating at home by taking pictures in our photo booth. This is an additional opportunity to connect with fellow attendees who, uh, and it was provided by the Colorado Office of Economic Development and International Trade. Thank you so much for your support. Finally, there's still time to view our sponsor company profiles, participate in our passport game. Instructions are located in your event platform menu. Visit our sponsors and enter to win a prize. We'll be back shortly to continue the celebration with the announcements of our I of the Year Award and the Bob Newman Lifetime Achievement Award. In the meantime, grab a beverage of choice, take a stretch break, and enjoy a short round of trivia. Questions will appear on your screen 
and you can put your answers in the chat to participate. See you in a bit.
tone. Welcome back, everyone. We have all shared some great behind the scenes photos so far. Let's take a look at a few. That's awesome. I, I love the enthusiasm. Let's keep the photos coming. We've got more to, uh, celebrating to do. And now, please, oh, wait a minute. That's my dog, Carl. He apparently got into the champagne a little bit early. Why can he not stay out of the expensive stuff? And the weird thing is, I found this in my backpack. Anyway, Carl's always a character and he loves CTA activity. So please keep the photos coming. We've got more celebrating to do. And now, please allow me to introduce Jason Cook, Managing Director of Communications, Media, and Technology for Accenture to present our next award. Jason? Thank you, Franny, for the intro. Good evening to all of you. My name is Jason Cook, and I'm a Managing Director at Accenture. I lead our communications, media, and technology business in the West. We're incredibly proud to be this year's CIO Award sponsor. Accenture understands technology's role in everything that we do. The purpose statement for our more than 500,000 employees around the world is to deliver on the promise of technology and human ingenuity. Together, we live this every day by serving global clients in 120 countries around the world. We embrace the power of change to create value and shared success for our clients, our people, our shareholders, our partners and our communities. Thank you all for being here this evening. And now let's take a moment to meet this year's CIO Award finalists. The CIO of the Year Award is presented to the individual who continually demonstrates leadership in their role as Chief Information Officer, maximizing productivity and guiding an IT team with integrity and strong commitment to maintaining and improving technologies within their organization. And now we have the pleasure of presenting the three finalists for the CIO of the Year Award. Attila Tinnick of Dish Network. It may sound simplistic, but probably being comfortable with being uncomfortable may have been one of the biggest things that I've had to overcome um, on my journey. Rex Young of Logarithm. I want to be inspirational uh, for the next set of folks that go through this, whether they're tech leaders or not. And uh, having the opportunity to tell my story, I think, is a good story to tell. And Alex Crusco of Coresight. You have to see opportunities and challenges. You have to be brave. You have to take a leap of faith. And for me, honestly, leadership has never been a destination that I pursued. It's always been a journey. What an incredibly inspiring group. This year has been like no other in history. It's elevated the CIO's role using technology to address unprecedented volatility. It accelerated digital, accelerated collaboration, data, cloud infrastructure for resiliency at an entirely new pace of change, advancing our technology agenda years ahead. And with that said, let me be the first to congratulate this year's remarkable and well-deserving winner, Attila Tinnick. Wow, um, what, what a huge honor. Um, especially when you consider the caliber of technology talent here in Colorado. Um, the fact that the CTA would even consider me for this is truly humbling and, and, and definitely congratulations to Rex and Alex as well. Uh, not to mention what 2020 meant to the IT community. It was definitely the year of CIOs and IT organizations. I mean, I, during this pandemic, there was a real call to action for technology departments, not only 
deliver critical projects, but in so many cases, just avoid massive business disruption. So in 2020, I think we all share this award. Um, with that said, I know they call us CIO of the year. Any, anyone who knows me uh, knows uh, the credit I will always give to the teams. Um, the reality is it's, it's more recognition of the outstanding contribution of the men and women of DISH IT. Um, from my direct reports to every team member, there is a relentless pursuit for excellence. Um, this is definitely more of an acknowledgement for their great work. Um, as well, you know, we are very fortunate um, at DISH and, and within the IT organization to have outstanding business partners um, and, and an outstanding executive leadership team that's passionate about embracing next generation technology and, and practices. So that makes a big difference. Um, finally, I do want to thank my family. They are so supportive and patient. Um, I don't know what I do without them. So. I guess I'll just wrap this and say thank you, Colorado Technology Association, for this award, and I will humbly accept it on behalf of Dish Network. Thank you, um, and I will turn it back over to you, Franny. Attila, Attila, congratulations, well deserved. Finally, we conclude this evening with the Bob Newman Lifetime Achievement Award. This award is a, is a distinguished honor. Recipients are recognized in three key areas. They have made a significant co uh, contribution to innovation in our state. They have a history of giving back to our community and they have been great supporters of CTA. This award is selected by past recipients of the Bob Newman Lifetime Achievement Award. Bob is a legend in the community and has been a great honor to get to know Bob and Judy over the last few years. I'd like to provide a brief and fascinating story and a, a wonderful story of Colorado. Bob is one of the original founders of CTA and he was with JD Edwards when he did so. He's had a rich and impactful career in technology. In 1974, a job at Deloitte brought Bob to Denver. In 76, he started a software development business and two years later, merged with another company to form J.D. Edwards. During his leadership, J.D. Edwards grew to nearly 6,000 employees in 15 countries and was the fourth largest application software company in the world. They went public in, in 1997 and then J.D. Edwards was purchased by PeopleSoft. And then PeopleSoft, in turn, was pur purchased by Oracle in 2005. As I mentioned earlier, Bob and Judy have been great community advocates. And their work to support the arts and technology is spectacular. In 2020, we gave out four Judy Newman scholarships to women in technology at our WIT conference in September. Thank you, Bob and Judy, for continuing to make a big impact. Now, let's hear a little bit from Bob now before we announce the recipient of this year's Bob Newman Lifetime Achievement Award. Hi, all. It's Bob Newman with greetings from warm Miami Beach, where Judy and I are enjoying a warm, sunny winter vacation. Uh, our place here is on government cut, which overlooks beautiful Biscayne Bay. And I just saw the Coast Guard go by, so I guess we're going to be secure and also safe from COVID regarding this. Also, interestingly, the cruise ships keep going in and out of here, uh, in spite of the fact that there are no passengers. I assume it's training, not really sure. You may know that I was one of the founders of the CTA and its first chair. I've been delighted with the evolution of the CTA over the years. And, and all the wonderful contributions that, that the CTA has made to our tech industries. Uh, thank you members and also great thanks to our wonderful staff who's pulled this all off. Uh, the APEX is around for quite a few years now and early on the board decided to include an annual lifetime award. The award is intended to include uh, honor achievements of many kinds, certainly involving the building of great businesses but also including the bringing of new jobs and whole industries to Colorado, establishing and training our workforce and building the rest of the infrastructure that we all need to prosper. 
uh, past winners have also made uh, substantial societal impacts in our communities, contributing both time and philanthropy. These contributions have been both transactional and cumulative. Uh, as the CTA has matured, the selection of the annual awardee has been made the responsibility of a panel of previous winners. I can attest to the fact that the panel takes a, uh, this responsibility very seriously. Usually many people are considered and there's a lively conversation and hours of debate before a person is finally selected. It's sort of like picking a new pope without the smoke. Uh, previous annual award members have certainly been business builders, but also mentors, academics, serial entrepreneurs, inventors, and certainly innovators. I'm proud to be part of this group. Uh, congratulations to all the nominees tonight, and particularly to our newest annual lifetime awardee. Yes. Thanks to Bob. And I know Bob is listening. I so appreciate all that you do for us. And I do wish that I was enjoying that beach right now. It's pretty cold here in Colorado. And now it is my pleasure to announce this year's Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Barbara Mallory. Barbara is an experienced corporate executive, entrepreneur, and board member. She has held senior executive positions in Oracle, TCI, which is now part of Comcast, and United Airlines. She's founded companies and raised significant capital for those enterprises. At United Airlines, she launched the Mileage Plus program, which quite frankly was the first of its kind. It was really the genesis of customer loyalty programs that we see as commonplace across industries today. She's served on many boards, both private and public, including National Research Corporation, currently on IMA Financial and the Kaufman Group. She is, was the vice chair of the Board of Overseers for the Carlson School at the University of, Missouri, of, of Minnesota. And Barb is also an advisor at Blackstone Entrepreneurial Network. She is, is also the past chair of the Board of Directors for the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City. Barb was named by the Denver Business Journal as the Outstanding Women in Business and, Technology, and Telecommunications in 2010. And in 2015, she was also named on the list of Colorado Women's Chamber 25 Most Powerful Women in Business. Tonight, it is our honor to recognize Barbara for all her many amazing accomplishments. Please, let's take a few moments and watch a short video about Barbara. My name is Barbara Mowry. I'm originally from Illinois, the Illinois area in uh, the suburbs of Chicago and Southern Illinois. When I think about what I've done in my career and how I got there, I think the word that comes to mind is unconventional. Um, I've been very fortunate in having a very diverse set of experiences in B2B, B2C, different technologies. I, I was involved in creating the first CRM system uh, in the airline business. Uh, in the days before CRM was a thing, and running the Mileage Plus Frequent Flyer program. I was involved in business-to-business e-commerce when that was just emerging. I was involved in uh, the early days of AI and big data and machine learning that we now take for granted and uh, lots of opportunities. And I was involved in the convergence of voice, video, and data in the telecom industry when we were moving from analog to digital and all those products were coming together. So. Diverse industries, very unconventional path, and I feel very fortunate that I've had those experiences. Anytime you're recognized by your peers, it's really an amazing experience. And I think about what Bob and Judy Newman have set out for us and the standard that they have set. All you have to do is look at this beautiful building in back of me, the Newman Center, and think about what they have contributed to the state and to, and to the country, for that matter. Um, Bob and Judy created a wonderful business. And then they took what resources that were available to them as a result of that stage in their life 
and they now went into the philanthropic stage of their life and have made continued to make a huge difference in the community. I think that's standard um, for anybody that is recognized for this award is something that we'll continue to strive for. Well, I'm now in the portfolio phase of my career, as I call it, where I'm still very engaged on a daily basis, but in a lot of different things, as opposed to just running one particular organization. So I get, I'm involved in serving on boards of directors for profit companies, uh, both public and private. I'm involved in foundation work, like the Kauffman Foundation, where we really focus on education and entrepreneurship, uh, which is very important to me. Uh, I've been involved in a lot for not-for-profit work and community service work like the Fed and other things like the Ben organization and other organizations in Colorado that um, National Association for Corporate Directors and Women Corporate Directors and there's a long list of things that I'm passionate about. Um, and I still get involved with entrepreneurial companies. I just joined the board of a startup company of 14 people and uh, that I'm very excited about that I think is going to change the world. So. The good news about when you're at this stage in your career, you can do lots and lots of different things. I also spend a lot of time with younger people. Um, I lecture at universities and teach classes because I'm very inspired by them. I think I'd probably get more out of those classes than maybe they get from me. Uh, but the next generation of people that are going to run organizations are extremely inspiring to me and I try to mentor them and support them to the extent that I can. So. There's lots of things to do in the world. Um, when you stop doing one thing, you have the opportunity to do a lot of things. And thanks to Bob and Judy, who have inspired lots of us to do that. That's where we are. And now I'd like to invite Barbara to say a few words. Barbara, congratulations. Thank you very much, Franny. And I would like to add my congratulations to all of the people and organizations who have been recognized by the Colorado Association, uh, Technology Association this week. It has been, at least I have been incredibly inspired by your stories and achievements. Uh, we have a lot of talent in this community and we're constantly reminded of that. I've been uh, in the Colorado tech community now for oh, over 26 years. And during that time, like a lot of us, I've seen a lot of growth. Uh, and that has resulted in an incredibly vibrant tech ecosystem that we have today. And I think when you think about what really makes Colorado unique, however, um, I think it's the supportive and collaborative nature of the culture that we have here in Colorado. And as a result, it has created a sense of community that is like no other place I've ever worked. Um, we really do help each other. And when we do that, we lift up all of us. Um, as has been mentioned by a lot of people in 2020, uh, and certainly recent events in our country, uh, it has been tough. And it's brought to light a lot of issues that I think we all agree need addressing. Um, I have been reminded that it's not only what our technology and organizations do that matters, but equally how we do it and with whom we do it. So as we celebrate our tech community uh, this week, I'd like to challenge ourselves as, as we commit to the future, uh, three things that I think I'd encourage you to think about. One is I'd like a future in Colorado where our technologies and businesses and organizations are a force for good where we really expand our tent and help foster inclusion and diversity of thought, which is so important to the success of any organization, and where we really continue to lift up the communities where we live and work. I'm really inspired by all of the people that I've heard throughout this week, and I really think that we can make our Colorado Tech community the North Star across the country for how technology organizations um, can truly be that force for good. I'd like to thank the Colorado Technology Association for holding this event uh, under uh, unusual circumstances and celebrate the tech community. Um, it, we all know that it takes a village to help us navigate our paths. And I particularly want to thank the incredibly talented teams that I've had the pleasure of working with over the years. 
my unbelievably supportive family, and the broader Colorado community uh, who have helped lift me up as well as everyone else. All three of those groups have been an incredible uh, importance to my journey. Uh, thank you very much for this award. I am really humbled by this honor and this recognition. Thanks very much, Franny. Barbara, thank you. And thank you for your inspiring words. I, um... I'm having a little bit of time getting my act together because I, everything you said was so spot on. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations again. And congratulations to all the Apex Award winners. This is an impressive group of people. It's nights like tonight that inspire me to remain being an optimist. Throughout 2020, despite our many difficulties we faced, our industry remained a bedrock of innovation. We adapted, we pivoted, we excelled. Without technology, without innovative leaders like the ones we saw here tonight, far more businesses would have been impacted by this pandemic. Instead, may, many were able to thrive because of the leadership in this community. Thank you for your leadership. Please continue your journeys to the top. We all benefit from your achievement. Before we conclude this evening, I'd like to thank everyone who helped make this virtual celebration possible. Thank you again to this evening's sponsors. Without these sponsors, we just can't do programming like this. Uh, before you log off, uh, please go to the sponsor company profiles and take a look and uh, engage. Thank you to all our tremendous volunteers who helped us promote the event celebrate our finalists, and coordinate logistics this evening. And I'd also like to thank BCC Live. They are the ones that did these wonderful videos and are producing this live event tonight. And our, I think, lifetime partner, Lacombe Events, who pivoted with us last year and did a wonderful job and has been a fabulous partner. Thank you. A quick reminder, we, you can find the video profiles of our finalists and winners on the JB, or DBJ website. On Monday, February 8th, we hope you'll take the time to learn more about their journey. And finally, I'd like to thank this team at CTA that I have the honor of working with. This was a daunting program to put together um, and many, many hours. And when we had one little itty bitty hiccup, we had belts and suspenders on and a backup plan. And that is what I love about this team. They are just incredibly passionate about the quality of work that they do. And I am honored to be here with them. Ah, and I hope you enjoyed this evening yourselves. And please be sure to uh, complete our event survey to help us plan for future events. It's really, really helpful to get your feedback. We hope to be able to gather with you all soon in person. Um, but in the meantime, CTA has a lot of exciting programs planned. And whether in person or virtually, we are committed to keeping this community together. Make sure you mark your calendars for Thursday, May 6th to attend our 2021 Sea Level at a Mile High. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you again soon. Goodbye.